Hello, in this video I will show you how to create a Bezier surface just like this one in Python. I will be using PyCharm for IDE and I think that's all you need to know. I expect you that you're already familiar with what a Bezier surface is and also know basic Python since I won't go into depth explaining the math of this. I will be using this book as reference. Uh, it is called An Introduction to Nerves with a Historical Perspective by David Rogers. If you go to chapter 5, you will find Bezier surfaces and the only thing uh, I want to show you are the mathematical definitions. I want to first compare it to the Bezier curve definition. Here you can see that now we have two summations. It might look difficult, but it's actually really not. All this means is that we will have two for loops instead of one. We also have a second term for the basis functions. Instead of j, now we have j and k, and they are defined by their respective equations, which both look exactly the same but with different nomenclature. Also notice that the parametric variable is not t anymore. Now the equation depends on u and w. Both of them, u and w, go from 0 to 1. Likewise, we have two binomial coefficients, so it is the same we did before for the Bezier curve, but with extra steps. I will explain what the basis functions are later in the video, when we get to them uh, during the writing of the code, but I will also link a better video that explains them more in detail in the description of this one, so make sure to check that out. First, let's recall what the Bezier curve is. I will define five control points, and for this example, let's just keep it simple and make it a straight line. We have two indices, i and n. N is the number of segments that the Bezier curve will have, and that is basically just means how many spaces there are between control points, and that will always be one less than the number of control points. I is just going to be a counter, and that is each control point will be assigned a value from zero to whatever N is. So I will basically tell you which control point you're on, because I starts from zero, that means that point number five will have an index of four. Now let's expand this example to the next dimension and look at what a Bezier surface would look like. The first thing we do is to recognize the number of control points. For Bezier surfaces, we will count by rows and columns. And I will separate the variables. On the left, I'll have rows, and on the right, I'll have uh, the values for columns. How many rows do we have in this example? Well, three rows, and how many columns? Five, right? We know n is the number of segments, and that is one less than the number of control points. So it will be the same for both. We need a counter now, so it will remain the same for both. Lastly, we, if we leave things like these, it will get just confusing because we're indexing columns and rows with the same symbols. So let's change the symbols for columns. Instead of i, let's have j, and instead of n, let's have m. So j now goes from 0 to whatever m is. Also, rather than referring to rows and columns, let's refer them in terms of u direction and w direction. Now, I am explicitly using the nomenclature used in the, in the equation, so you can relate the parts of the equation to what I'm doing on the screen right now. Regarding the control point indexation, let's first assume the bottom left node is our starting point. That will mean that it would be index 0 and 0 because it's at row 0 and column 0. Remember that we start counting from 0 instead of 1. What would be the index of the red point? So let's count the rows. So 0, 1, 2. The i will be equal to 2. Now, now the columns. So from the left, 0, 1, 2, 3. j will be equal to 3. The index of this point is 2, 3. Okay, enough of this. I won't go over the whole theory. Check the videos in the description for that. This should be enough for you to understand uh, what the code is going to do and how to implement the equation into the algorithm. First, we call NumPy because we will need to use arrays for the calculations rather than lists. Then matplotlib so we can see the resulting surface. And I will also import this other library where I store codes I write for the channel. And within is the SQL Writer, and we needed to export the surface as a 3D object. I'll explain more when we get to it. Okay, now let's start by specifying the variables that we as users will be able to change. The first one, of course, will be the control points, and they will be organized in three matrices. One for X, another for Y, and the last one for C. All three need to have the same number of rows and columns. So these will be the control points that will influence the surface. Here's where you input your own coordinates to create your own surface. Next, we specify the number of cells we will break the surface into. We have two directions, so we specify cells for direction U and direction W. 
they don't need to be the same value. The two directions can have different number of cells within them. Now we can uh, obtain some other values that depend on our control points and number of cells. The number of control points in the direction U will be equal to the number of rows that our control points arrays have. So same number of rows as X, Y, or C. I will use just X in this case. And for W, it will be the number of columns. Then the number of segments is one less than the number of control points. So N is equal to U PTS minus one and M is equal to W PTS minus one. The parametric variables u and w will just be uniformly spaced vectors that go from 0 to 1. We can use the function space for that, and the number of partitions will depend on the number of cells we specified for each direction. These next two, you don't have to include them in your code, but I want to show you the plots for the Bernstein polynomials, and I will store them inside these two empty arrays. Again, you don't have to do this. Lastly, let's create three arrays filled with zeros for the final matrices of the Bezier surface. Their size will be dependent on the tuple we choose, and in our case, it will be U cells for rows and W cells for columns. Let's just take a second to discuss the layout of the code. Right now, we will create a function to get the binomial coefficients, and then another function to get the basis polynomials. These two functions will be called inside the main loop where we update the Bezier surface. So, the skeleton of the code will look like first, two bin binomial coefficient functions, one for u and one for w, two basis polynomial functions, one for u and one for w, and the main loop, which consists of two nested for loops, one loop for u and one loop for w. So with the layout of the code settled, uh, now we have to write the math down. The binomial coefficient n i will take n and i as inputs, and I will return the result of the equation I have on screen. For the factorials, we can use numpy factorial function. And for binomial mj, again, this is how the books calls it, you just do the same, but using j instead of i, and m instead of n. i and j haven't been introduced yet, but they are just counters for the for loops. Now the basis polynomial j will take n, i, and u, and we'll return the result of the equation for basis polynomials. Here we can use NP matrix instead of NP array because it is necessary that this is represented as a 2D array even if it is just one row. Don't worry about it for now, just do the same for K and using the respective variables J, M and W. I will explain why later. Now let's start writing the main loop. The first loop will be for the u direction and the counter will be i and will be defined between zero and the number of control points. The nested for loop will be for the w direction with the counter j and will go from zero to the number of control points in w. Now the next two lines, you don't have to write them. Here's where I will store every basis function created so I can plot them and show you what they mean later. Again, you don't have to do this. We can write the Bezier surface matrices. So we will update the matrices filled with zeros here as the loops go on. It would be X Bezier is equal to J times K times the X coordinate of the control point for that for loop and that plus whatever X Bezier that we have calculated up to this point. Before writing the equations for uh, Y and C, pay attention to the multiplications between J and K. Both are one row arrays with different number of columns, so you cannot multiply them. Also remember that X base here has a size depending on the cells we chose. So in our case, it will be a 10 by 12 array. J has a size of one by 12 and K has a size of one by 10. The multiplication has to result in a 12 by 10 matrix. And we can do that by transposing the J array into a 12 by one. If you remember matrix multiplications, now the multiplication will result in a 12 by 10, which is exactly what we want. So up here, let's create a new variable JT or J transposed, and let's call J in here. We can use a dot transpose now. And this is exactly why we used NP matrix rather than NP array. This doesn't work for arrays. Replace J with JT in the equation for the X base here. And now let's do the same thing for Y and Z and just replace the relevant terms. like this. I will add these two lines of code here. You don't have to do this. Uh, then I will plot the rows of these two matrices with this block of code, running it. 
you can see two plots, one for u and one for w. And the lines in those plots are the basis functions. You can see that the number of lines equal to the number of control points in each direction. Well, all this means is that for each control point, its line, the closer it is to one, the more influence it has on the surface and the more the surface will be pulled towards that point. This is why the surface starts at the control points, at the first control points, their values are one and all the others are zero. Like here you can see at the rank, at the left hand side of the of the plot. Okay, finally we've reached the time to plot the surface. I will use this block of code right here, running it. You can see the surface now and also the control points we used. If you want to export this, you can use the SEL function we wrote in another video. The link is in the description. That's it. Now you can take this outside of Python to almost any other CAD software. Now in order for this to be actually useful, we are going to put all this code into a function that you can call whenever you need it. So open a new .py file. I have mine here. As you can see, I have other functions here as well. Open a new function. So def and call it anything you want. I will call it mine Bezier surface. And it will take as arguments the control points X, Y, and Z in both cells. Go back to the code, cope everything after we specify the cells except for the plots, paste it inside the function in your .py file and add at the end a return, x base here, y base here, and z base here, because these will be your outputs for the function. Now to test this, go back to the main file, go to the header, import your .py file like I have done mine, delete everything you copied before, call the function we just wrote and run it. There you go, it works. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you got something useful out of it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Okay, bye.